<laughs> the Senate bill, as currently written and is hidden the floor, would put in place the toughest border enforcement plan that America has ever seen. The Missing Migrant Project seeks to organize all um, missing persons reports relevant to the U.S.-Mexico border. Every time we hear uh, the type of language being used to discuss the border, this, this amping up of border patrol presence and surveillance and technology and equipment and militarization, all we see is a border where uh, we see more death, more skeletons, more separated families, more families looking for someone in the desert. So the current debate on comprehensive immigration reform in some ways mimics the conversation that happened in the 1990s. Border Patrol presence, like in the Tucson sector, um, quintupled, effectively sealing off the border. And what was left open were the wide expanses of desert. Once people got to the border and they saw the re these remote areas that were their only option to cross through, they would see how risky it would be and they would be deterred. Twelve years later, we've seen that they were not deterred and they went through the desert areas in very high numbers and they died in very high numbers. The on-the-ground changes happened around 1999 to 2001. And 2001 was really where this office noticed that we were now in a crisis, that we were getting hundreds of remains for people who had died mostly of exposure in very remote areas of the desert borderlands. Got some great tattoos. Yeah, I first thing you know, over there the picture. Oh, wow. What is it? Juana Flor. Floro. Juana. Mm. I can't make Flora. out that first word, can you? Is that it? Yeah. yeah. What is You're going to smile now, cry later. Oh. You might want on Yoro. Uh, uh, Yoro, cry. OK. So Are these deaths the really acceptable to us? Um, just because they're so-called illegals, are we really willing to accept hundreds of deaths along the border each year? That one act of transgressing a border can't be the only way that we define these people. So we try to look for clues from the skeleton as to who this person might be. And we make some pronouncements on the various bones of interest and come up with what we call a biological profile. Was it a man or a woman? About how old they were? About how tall were they? Can we tell their ancestry? Uh, from their teeth, do they have any fillings? Do they have any missing teeth? Do they have any cavities? Uh, ornamentation type of uh, uh, dental restoration that, that the family might notice? Well, hopefully there's a missing persons report that we can compare that post-mortem profile to. If it is, then Robin can get in touch with the family and see if there's any dental records or medical records. We can then uh, try to see if the family will contribute a saliva sample or a blood sample and then try to do a DNA comparison between that family reference sample and the DNA that's hopefully profiled from the bones of the uh, dead person. If there's not, then the person just remains unidentified and is one of 800 other unidentified cases going back to about the year 2000. The items are, are a very intimate look into someone's life. First of all, of course, it's not the things that someone would want to define them after death. I think they're really representative of personhood in a way that the bodies and the bones aren't necessarily. They can also be the single most compelling item for families to 
believe that this unrecognizable thing is their missing person. What we say when, we, when we're talking about border security and the way that it's being discussed now comes with a certain acceptable collateral damage. Since when have you heard anybody in Washington, D.C. talking about the, the bodies on the border? It's not even on the radar. There's this sense that because they broke the law initially that they somehow deserved it. What I could do what probably would be best is to get a limited list and then um, send you via email a list of those numbers and then you can look at the photographs. We have an online system um, now that, that all of the missing persons um, are in. Um, so instead of having to search by hand and look at all of the, basically all of the remains that have been found since he went missing, now I can see automatically what, what the possibilities are. The dead and the missing and their families are teaching us about what human rights means in a globalized economy. There will always be new families, new immigrants trying to come across, and there still hasn't been attention paid to how does the first-time migrant wishing to come across the border for work, how does someone like that not have to cross through the desert? He's a small male, small young male, probably was late teens to maybe mid-twenties in age. It seems to me as an American that we need to fill a certain niche of jobs here. And apparently Americans don't want to do them or don't want to do them for the current wages. But the country south of us and the country south of that country in Central America, those people will do those jobs. Uh, jobs that are the backbone of our society. His, his uh, right upper canine isn't as fully erupted as the other teeth, so it could correspond to that. The number of people that are now crossing illicitly across our border, some number of those are dying. I gotta believe that the vast majority of those people, had they had a chance to pay whatever fee they paid the smuggling operation that got them over here, they would gladly pay that fee to the U.S. government to get some kind of legitimate work visa. I think that's immigration reform. That would drastically cut down the number of deaths.